Hello folks, Dominic here, with a little bit of breaking news. On August 13th, 2022, The Guardian newspaper out of the UK ran a headline about the tomb of Tutankhamun and its famous excavator, Howard Carter. The headline goes as follows, quote, Howard Carter stole Tutankhamun's treasure, new evidence suggests, end quote. This is an interesting bit of information. It comes from a new book by Dr. Bob Breyer titled Tutankhamun and the Tomb that Changed the World. This book is releasing in October 2022, just in time for the 100-year anniversary of Carter discovering the tomb. As you can imagine, this kind of headline is rather intriguing. But what does it actually mean? What is going on here? Let's break it down and get a sense of the context. The story begins in 1934, 12 years after Carter found the tomb. In that time, the excavator had been steadily working to document, conserve, and remove items from the monument. Those treasures were recorded in Luxor and then shipped off to the Cairo Museum. Mostly. In 1934, Carter sent an object to one of his colleagues, a man named Alan Gardner. Gardner, a prominent Egyptologist and expert in language, had been Carter's translator for most of the excavation. Whenever there were important texts to study or document, Gardiner did that work. Until 1934. In that year, Carter sent Gardiner a Wehem amulet. This is a small object used in funerals. Specifically, Wehem amulets are part of the opening of the mouth ceremony. The tomb of Tutankhamun had several Wehem amulets, and most of them had been recorded and shipped to Cairo Museum. But... Not this one. Carter sent the amulet to Gardner as a gift. And when he did so, Carter assured Gardner that the amulet did not come from the tomb of Tutankhamun. On that basis, Gardner accepted it. He had already accepted other, smaller gifts from Carter in the past. But Gardner still took this item to a colleague, Reginald Engelbach, at the Cairo Museum. Engelbach revealed the truth. This Wehem amulet was from the tomb. It matched several others in the same style delivered by Carter to the museum. The design and decoration of this amulet was identical with the others. The item came from Tutankhamun. Gardiner was mortified, and he immediately returned the amulet to Carter. He sent a letter describing Engelbach's report, and he chastised Carter, complaining, quote, I deeply regret having been placed in so awkward a position. Bearing in mind that Gardner was an English academic of the old Victorian sort, this understated language was a strong reprimand. Essentially, Gardner was pissed. This is the story as it's available now. More information will come to light following the publication of Breyer's book, and the archival research he undertook. For now, Let's discuss the significance of the revelation. You may be thinking, okay, so Carter stole an amulet. Is that really such a big deal? It's one amulet out of many from the richest tomb in history. Why is this headline news? Fair enough, I can see where you're coming from. In this case, the problem is not the object itself, not the size, nor the value. The problem here is Carter's attitude. He sent the amulet to Gardiner as a gift, as if it were his property to distribute or bequeath. Unfortunately, there was no legal or moral basis for that attitude. By 1934, Carter and the Egyptian government had butted heads several times on issues related to the tomb. The legal position was clear and settled. Carter was the primary excavator, the scientific authority, and he could manage the excavation as he saw fit. However, the Egyptian government, representing the Egyptian people, were the owners and holders of the tomb, and its contents. By every measure, legal and moral, Carter held no rights to the treasures of Tutankhamun. By giving this amulet to Gardiner, as if it were his property, Carter disregarded, or even disdained, that situation. 
This act of ownership also touches on the larger issue of Qatar and Egyptology's colonial legacy. Like it or not, this field developed in a context of imperial and adventurist projects. Carter's attitude to the treasures of Tutankhamun was not unique. The whole field was rife with similar attitudes and behaviours. But as scholars in the modern day, and the public, re-examine those aspects and legacies, this revelation will likely become another chapter in the long history of colonialism in Egypt. So, does this irrevocably tarnish Carter's reputation? That depends. In my Tomb of Tutankhamun miniseries, I covered two major instances where Carter ran afoul of moral and legal standards. In the first instance, he was accused of stealing a wooden head, depicting Tutankhamun as the god Nefertem. That accusation was a serious controversy at the time, but the accusation itself was never proved. The head was recovered by the authorities, who chose not to investigate any further. So we can't say exactly what happened there. Obviously, we all have our suspicions, but without proof, that's all they are. The second incident was far clearer. Following Carter's death, various items were recorded in his will. These items clearly, undeniably came from the tomb of Tutankhamun. So, at least since Carter's death, we have known that he took small objects from the monument. None of that is excusable, and to the best of my knowledge, no Egyptologist denies Carter's failings as a human being. But that's the complicated part. For scholars, Carter's reputation has never been personal or moral. He is not remembered as a shining beacon of virtue or personal excellence. Instead, Carter's Egyptological reputation is founded on the care with which he excavated the tomb of Tutankhamun, the patience with which he recorded and conserved objects, the way he minimised damage and preserved them for posterity. Compared to his contemporaries and predecessors, Carter was meticulous and respectful of the treasures he discovered. However, even in the bubble of academia, it is clear that Howard Carter and the tomb of Tutankhamun have a sort of mythical aura around them. For the general public, this discovery is one of those events that is so famous, everyone knows something about it. But realistically, it is hard to explore all of the context around those stories for every historical event. So, Carter and the tomb of Tutankhamun have picked up an aura of fame and splendour. From that perspective, yes, this probably does tarnish the legacy of Howard Carter. It does not change the importance of the tomb, but the man himself will probably lose a few fans over this incident. That is a good thing. While people like Carter deserve credit for the excellent work they did, we do ourselves no favours if we elevate them on pedestals, or view them as anything more than human. Carter was flawed, fallible, and occasionally perfidious. From the Egyptological perspective, Carter was a better archaeologist than many of his predecessors and contemporaries, but was he a better man? That is a far more difficult question. On a positive note, Breyer's research does prove an important point. There is still a wealth of information to be found in archives and documents. Archaeologists work in the ground, but the records and reports surrounding that work have their own value. If nothing else, this revelation does show how research in the archives can still yield valuable results. Hopefully, this will stimulate further investigations into the archives of Carter, his contemporaries, and many others. The information uncovered will not always be positive, but it will always be valuable. This is a small preview of the information. The larger story will be available in Dr. Breyer's forthcoming book, Tutankhamun and the Tomb That Changed the World. That is releasing in October 2022. Fortunately, Dr. Breyer was kind enough to share an advanced copy of this book with me. So, in November 2022, I will be releasing a more detailed discussion of this issue. 
When we reach the centenary of the discovery, I will be re-releasing my series on the tomb itself. This time, I've edited the episodes together into one mega episode, and I'll be adding small interludes between the major chapters that dive into little side topics. Things I wanted to cover in the original series, but cut for time. Thanks to the centenary, I have a chance for round two. So we're pulling a Lucas and releasing a special edition on the centenary of the discovery. Keep an eye, or ear, out for the release. 